I look like an Italian monster. You're not monster. supposed to be like, it's not supposed to be, I mean, you can I put it in I way it prefer it inside. It's not supposed to be where it goes. That is where I'm putting it. Okay, it's not where it goes. <laughs> welcome, welcome to another episode of Fantasy News. I'm your host, Green Daniel, and we have Brandon Sanderson to Lord of the Rings news today. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Apparently, the legendary fantasy author Brandon Sanderson is co-creating a new fantasy TV series because, of course, he's putting more things on his plate while releasing multiple books a year. He's working with Michael Struth... I'm not going to try to pronounce that, who also helped create Babylon 5 and Sense8. The premise of the show seems to be around following a chosen one for the dark side. Links for everything I talk about in today's video and more in the description down below. Now transitioning into Lord of the Rings news. But before we get into it, let's go ahead and talk about the sponsor for today's video. That's right, your boy's channel's blowing up. Raid Shadow Legends. This is one of the most ambitious mobile games I've ever played in my life, and they're not making me say this, I'm just saying it because I want to. I downloaded it for the promo to give it a try before I agree to do anything, and I can't stop playing. It's, it's very good. I haven't played mobile games much recently, but this is far better than anything I have played on my phone, and I'm, I'm running on a few generations old and it runs seamlessly, so that's just damn impressive. Within the first three months of being out, Raid Shadow Legends amassed over 10 million million followers, and there's a damn good reason for that. It's a strategy RPG where you select a champion. My favorite's Galek, because in the intro, he like mocked his friend who died. And I was like, I like you. Let's do that, that's great. And these models for these champions, while they're spectacular on themselves, they're not just like surface value. There's backstories to every champion and their voice acted really, really well. This is coming from someone who does voice acting now, so I'm I'm impressed. I can say my professional opinion. Well done, voice acting. Good job. There's a reason this game has a nearly perfect rating in the App Store with over 200,000 reviews. There is a highly anticipated update that came out before I could put out this promo, so it's been updated recently, and right now, yes, this is happening currently, there's a rewards program for new players to help you catch up with the people who've been at it for a while, where for the first 90 days, every day you lock in, you get a reward. It's completely free to play, you lose nothing by clicking the links and giving it a try, except actually you gain something. It's beneficial to you. You get 50,000 silver in the game's currency. So boom, you're gaining things. Not You're not even losing nothing. Go to the video description, click the special link, and you will get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as a part of the new player program to start your journey. Now back to your fantasy news! More information came out in an interview with one of the show's consultants. The most interesting thing I found in this article was the fact that apparently the rights for the show are very restricted and they do not have access to everything. This likely might be why the show is actually taking place in the second age and not the age the fans are more familiar with, the third. In fact, that's pretty much directly stated in the article. They only have access to the second age and maybe some stuff from more materials, but not the direct third age Lord of the Rings. And in the final bit of Lord of the Rings news today, it seems that we are getting some beautiful new Lord of the Rings covers. I'm putting them up on the screen now and killing time so you have time to look at them. Look at how amazing they are. They're Swedish and they're great. Swedish, right? Let me let me double check that. Yes, Swedish editions of The Lord of the Rings. I'm gonna order them, are you? It's somehow like kind of Tolkien-esque, but modern, and I really dig it. Do you have any opinions on that? Okay. And moving on to adaptation news, Catherine Hardwick is set to direct an upcoming fantasy female-led Viking TV series. Feminism! Right, Maddie? Woo! Cool. And as the article says, be sure to grab a towel because a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy TV series is going to be adapted over at Hulu as we previously covered, but more information has been released. So link to this one if you want more information in the description down below, as well as the link to that sponsor. That, that sure looked good, I'd click that. And then I'm very excited to see this guy doing big things. Andy Serkis is apparently set to direct or at least co-direct Venom 2. And in his Dark Materials adaptation news, it has been confirmed that the show will restrict to one book per season with a few treats sprinkled in. Apparently that's how they've decided to phrase it for the fans. I'm very excited about this. The trailer looks spectacular. Definitely going to be reviewing it here. I mean, Daniel Green's definitely going to be reviewing it here on the channel for you. And in the only bit of superhero news we'll be covering today, thank God, Marvel has set a crossover event to happen at Hulu between the shows Cloak and Dagger and The Runaways. This is extra notable because it's the first time I've been aware of where two different streaming platforms are going to have a crossover. Freeform's Cloak and Dagger and Hulu's Runaways, that's that's pretty neat. I have not seen that be happening before. 
good for them. Disney owns Hulu now? Sure. And why are they coming out with Disney Plus and not just stocking Hulu? No, I remember we saw the article that like Disney Plus is going to be like a feature on Hulu. Oh, oh, so Disney Plus is connected to Hulu. Yeah. Huh. Pretty sure. So they're all still under the Disney banner and uh, they're going to own the country one day. And for all you sci-fi nerds out there, The Expanse has been renewed for season five over at Amazon. I will be getting to the show and reviewing it here on the channel. Excited to get to that. Probably one review per season, not, not an episode by episode review. It's already been out. For new shows, I'll do episode by episode when they're released weekly. And in very strange fantasy and superhero, oh, damn it, there is more superhero news. Todd Phillips, the creator behind the Joker movie, has been pushing for the project to be presented at notable film festivals and claims that Oscars are in the movie's future. And with the cast, premise, character, all of that, I'm somewhat believing. I'm, I'm maybe not quite that hyped. I know a lot of people are super hyped for this. I'm sure it'll be good but I'm not sure where on the scale of good to great it's really going to fall. But normally superhero movies are not ever really put in festivals. That just doesn't really happen. So this is curious. This is this is very curious. An adaptation for Circe, or apparently in the original Greek pronunciation, Kirka? Kirka. Kirka. Kirka? Kirka has been picked up by HBO Max, the new HBO streaming service that is coming down the road because apparently HBO needs a third one, Go, Now, and Max. And this will be based on classic Greek mythology. Very excited. I love Greek mythology. I think we all do. Every millennial 90s kid had like a thing, made, probably because of the Hercules movie, probably partly. That was a part of it. And the Percy Jackson. Although I wasn't really ever a Percy Jackson kid. I'm gonna be honest, that wasn't me. And a featurette was released from the Lord of the Rings TV crew showing who is a part of this project so far. Too many people for me to list here. Link to check it out in the description down below. But basically a lot of major well-known Tolkien nerds, good on them, probably their dream job. So I'm actually like legitimately excited for them and Cool. And a show I've never seen and not particularly curious to try out, Carnival Row has been renewed for season two over at Amazon. And the last bit of fantasy news we'll cover here today, and arguably the most hardcore fantasy news because it's, now we had Lord of the Rings news, so it, Lord of the Rings beats out Dungeons and Dragons. But in Dungeons and Dragons news, the director of Game Night, a surprisingly actually pretty funny movie, I had low expectations going into that, but it was funny. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. Do you like it? Yeah, I did like it. He has been circling the Dungeons and Dragons property, trying to get a movie made. And for those of you born after probably like me and a few years after remember it, but many others don't, there has been a Dungeons and Dragons movie and I think I heard there was a sequel to it. They were, they exist. Actually, according to this article, three Dungeons and Dragons movies were released between the years 2000 and 2012. That's one more than I was aware of, but it makes sense that another movie could be in the works with the massive resurgence of Dungeons and Dragons popularity with online sensation critical role out there promoting it. Notable figures like Stephen Colbert are always talking about their obsession with it. It's being featured in shows like Stranger Things and apparently it's very popular in prisons. You know that? Yeah. No. People in prison play D and D a lot. I've seen like multiple sources confirming that it's like it's popular in prison now. Check out your prison D and D. I would watch that show. Prison D and D. I want that now. Coming soon to Bravo. This has been your latest fantasy news. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Be sure to click the links in the description down below. Just go through, click them all one by one. I promise I didn't hide any any bad things in there. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.